Hi folks, this is Shafiq. Today we are going to implement digital signature algorithm or shortly DSA in Python programming language from scratch. But before we begin, please like the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest videos. Also, your comments are more than welcome. Thank you for your all support in advance. DSA requires you to use two dependent prime numbers. Initially, let's set them small numbers, but in practice, we are going to set them very large integer numbers. Let's say P is 1279 and Q is 71. As I mentioned, P and Q must be dependent and P minus one must be divisible by Q without any remainder. That's the prerequisite of those prime numbers. Secondly, P and Q must be prime numbers. We should check it can be divisible by any number between two and its square root value, but this is going to be performed slowly. That's why I'm going to use this package SignPy. If you haven't installed that package yet, you may run pip install SignPy. Thereafter, I'm going to import its is prime module from SignPy import here i'm going to check p is prime number and similarly q is a prime number thereafter i'm going to generate a random integer h and my generator in the next step is going to depend on this that's why here i'm going to import random module first and h is going to be an integer number between 2 and p minus 2 as I mentioned, p minus 1 must be divisible by q without any remainder. In other words, p minus 1 is going to be a multiplier of q. Let's find the multiplier value first. p minus 1 over q. If you are going to use very large integer numbers, you should use double slash here. And it's 18. In other words, p minus 1 is equal to a times q. Now I'm going to find our generator G. This is going to be h to the power of a in modulo p. In this experiment, our generator G is going to be 1106. Now Alice is going to generate a private k and calculate her public k. Let's say x for the private k of Alice. We are going to generate a random integer, random dot, random integer. 1 and q minus 1. Thereafter, this public a is going to be, let's say, at y generator g to the power of x in modulo p. Alice will keep secret her private k x, but she is going to publish her public k by public, and her public k is 146 in this experiment. It's time to sign a message. Normally, we are using a hash function to convert a plain message to an integer value, but I'm going to skip it. Instead of this, I'm going to use a numerical value to sign and uppercase h refers to hash and let's sign the message 17. DSA requires you to generate a random integer for each signing and let's set that random number to k variable. Similar to private k of a list, we are going to generate a random integer between 1 and q minus 1. Thereafter, we are going to find the corresponding public k value similar to this calculation. Alice is going to calculate generator g to the power of random k k in modulo p. But thereafter, she is going to find this value in modulo q. Then Alice is going to calculate the value s and she is going to find the multiplicative inverse of k first power k to the power of minus 1 for modulo q times hash value plus her private k x times r. r is coming from the corresponding calculation of random integer and we are going to find this calculation in modulo q. And at this point, R and S pair is going to be the signature of hash value 17. So this is going to send message in this case, H and also R and S pair to Bob. But before sending, she must confirm that R must not be equal to zero and S must not be equal to zero. Now it's time to verify. Bob is going to find the multiplicative inverse of S firstly. 
s to the power of minus 1 in modulo q and this is going to be w then he's going to make two calculations first one is u1 is going to be hash times w modulo q second calculation is going to be u2 is going to be r times w in modulo q now he's going to calculate the checkpoint and this is going to be generator g power of u1 in modulo p times public key of alice which is y to the power of u2 in modulo p this multiplication may be greater than the value of p that's why i'm going to find the modulo p here again and finally he's going to calculate this calculation for modulo q and then he calculates the checkpoint he's going to check checkpoint is equal to r if this condition is satisfied then signature is valid for this message otherwise signature is going to be invalid now let's focus on the proof of this method and understand why this is working here as calculation was multiplicative inverse of k in mod q we can get rid of the mod here because we have mod here already i wonder the k value from this equation i can say that k is equal to multiplicative inverse of s times hash plus private k of alice times r remember that r is coming from the random integer k now i want to move this multiplicative inverse of s term into the parentheses k is going to be hash times multiplicative inverse of s plus x times r times multiplicative inverse of s mod q bob represented multiplicative inverse of s in modulo q as w let's replace those terms instead of using multiplicative inverse of s i'm going to use w we have this equation and also what we know g mod p must be equal to g mod p if g stays in the base and i use this equation in the exponent result must be same again so i'm going to use g to the power of k must equal to this term according to the product rule of exponents i can represent this equation as g to the power of h times w for mod q times g to the power of this term x times r times w mod q this must be equal to this also i know that according to the power of power rule i can represent this as g to the power of x to the power of this term this must be equal to this term and what i know g to the power of x is equal to y so let's replace that instead of using g to the power of x i'm going to use y thereafter please remember that u1 and u2 calculations performed by bob h times w was u1 and r times w was u2 let's represent this again also we are using the same modulo mod q here i'm going to use u1 and here i'm going to use u2 and here please notice that while the calculation of checkpoint bob calculates g to the power of u1 g to the power of u1 times y to the power of u2 y to the power of u2 so this multiplication is equal to checkpoint calculated by bob even though bob doesn't know the secret k k value he is able to calculate this via this calculation i know that p is greater than the q that's why i can represent this as firstly mod p thereafter mod q i know that this must be satisfied always remember the checkpoint calculated by bob g to the power of u1 in modulo p times y to the power of u2 in modulo p and finally he's going to find the value for modulo q as calculated here so this is the checkpoint this must be equal to the g to the power of random integer k in modulo p in modulo q let's remember how our value is calculated by alice Let's represent this as g to the power of k in modulo p in modulo q as you can see this must be equal to r because they both equal to g to the power of random integer k in modulo p thereafter in modulo q that's why if hash message is not changed checkpoint is going to be equal to r part of the signature so in this video 
we implemented digital signage algorithm DSA in Python from scratch. Also, we focus on the math behind the DSA and proven its correctness. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.